if, if, if one of the folks that are part of a congregation or even their pastor was, was, was looking to try to figure out how, how, how do we shift things? I mean, it, is there any other advice you'd, you'd want to give them if they say, we, we were, you know, we've been plateaued or we've been kind of maybe watching a decline for a while. Um, we want to move forward. Are there some first steps or anything they'd want to take? Well, I, and this is, I don't mean this to sound like a cop-out, but I probably would pick up the phone and I'd call Terry Tiemann, <laughs> who is one of our synodical experts on revitalization. And he does this all the time, and I don't, I don't do a lot in that. So I'd rather not go fully there. Uh, that's really his forte and does great work there. Uh, but I think, I guess I would, I would say to really, if, if you're a leader in that church, and, and let's say you hold some seat of authority or some semblance of, of power in that church in a godly way, and that's on your heart, and God's put it on your heart, and we're just not reaching this local community or whatever, I would, I would try to find other leaders like that and I would start gathering them together to pray about that and to even look and study and talk and discuss about that. Because I do believe that when God has put that vision on, on a heart in a congregation, it's a very infectious thing. And that Because it's God's will. I mean, it's what he wants the church to do. He's not going to say no to that. So if that is you, that's where I would start. I'd, I'd probably try to get a hold of a Terry. But I would also, I'd almost approach it like a church plant, and I'd, I'd probably do some studying in the community. I'd start learning. I'd become the expert on my community. Uh, that's one of the cool things, you know, in, in our ministry at Cross Point, the other churches refer to us, and we're Lutheran. They refer to us as the community church in Katy, Texas. We're known for being the place that if you don't know Christ, we have Christians from other churches bring their unchurched friends to our church because they know their, their friends would feel comfortable there. They would not feel comfortable at their church. So uh, I, I'd, I'd probably become the expert in your community. I'd start learning about the needs of the community. I'd, uh, the, the, another thing that we talk about is the church exists to bless the community, not the community exists to bless the church. So we are there to bless the community. We're there to give to the community. Our facility is open to any nonprofit group uh, you can use it at no cost, okay? Uh, it's, it's for the community. It's a community center. You can reserve it. Uh, so how can you, as, that's, as you're asking me this question, I'd probably say, how can we give back to the community? Okay, how, what can we give to the community? We put in a hike and bike trail. You know, we have a disc golf course. We have fields they can use. Uh, it, this, it belongs to the community. It doesn't belong to us. It actually belongs to God. We're the stewards of it for the community. All right, belongs to God. We're the stewards for the community, and we're sacramental, right? Sacramental is twofold in our understanding: the the sacraments, baptism and Lord's Supper, high and holy, but then also incarnational. What does it mean to be the means of grace to God in the community? The local church is the means of grace of God to that community. Okay, so what would that look like if our church? existed to bless the community. And if you just start asking that question of people, now some aren't gonna like it, but you would find some that would find that pretty intriguing, especially 25 year olds, 30 year olds, who really understand or they wanna see something done. You know, they wanna experience something and make a difference. It's a very powerful question, so be a run with that one. <laughs> All right.